In this video, I'll demonstrate how to send and receive binary files um, to and from the Z80 computer using the bload and bdump commands. This video will show how to do this on a PC running Linux. In another video, I will do the same thing with a PC running Windows. Uh, to begin, we open two terminal windows and place them side by side. Focusing on the left hand window, we will use this window to communicate with the Z80 computer using the Minicom program. And once Minicom is started, we can take the Z80 reset and you see the greeting message and the prompt indicating that the Z80 computer is ready to receive commands. Focusing on the right hand window, uh, this is where we will enter uh, commands to the Linux system to send and receive the binary files. The reason we need the second window is because the Minicom program does not have the commands needed to send and receive simple binary files. So I'm going to change to my Z80 directory uh, where we will uh, place the files to send and receive. Here I've written a simple program with the gedit text editor. Of course since we're creating a new computer system we have to write a hello world program the program displays the string hello world on the display. Uh, it's a very simple program. Um, we start it at um, 0800, which is the beginning of RAM. Uh, the HL register is loaded with the address of the string we want to display. And we call the write string subroutine which is in the 2K ROM. This subroutine will display the string. Then after we return from the subroutine we jump back to the monitor warm start to get the command prompt to continue to be able to enter commands into the Z80 monitor program. Now we're going to assemble this with an assembler program and this program needs to know where the right string subroutine is in the 2K ROM, so we put its address here with the equals um, assembler directive. And the assembler also needs to know the address of the monitor warm start, and we put that in as well. The um, program is saved to the Z80 assembly directory, and I've given it the name hello world.asm. Now returning back to the uh, terminal window that's focused on the Z80 assembly directory. If we list the directory with attention to any file named hello, uh, we'll see the um, hello world ASM file is present. We can display the contents of this file using the cat command. and this just displays the text that we had seen in the text editor before we saved it. Now we can assemble this program using the Z80 ASM program and the input file will be the hello world uh, ASM uh, file that we created and output will be, um, we'll name it lowworld.bin for binary and if we want a list file we can create that also so we hit return we didn't get any error messages that shows that the program assembled without any syntax errors if we display the directory again with attention to anything named hello, 
we'll see the three files. Um, in particular, here we see the hello world BIN file. That's the binary file that we'll send to the ZED computer with its uh, file length here as 25. Turning back to the left-hand window, which is communicating with the Z80 computer, we see the command prompt, and we will set up the Z80 to receive the binary file with the bload command. And we'll put it in at 0800, which is the address for which we assembled it. Now, the length of the file we've already seen is 25 bytes. Uh, now the Z80 is ready to receive the file. Returning to the right-hand window, uh, we'll give a command to send the binary file to the Z80 computer. We'll use the same cat command that we use to display the text of the assembly language file. But in this case, uh, we will, quote, display, unquote, the binary file uh, to the uh, serial port. by using the redirect command and the uh, Z, I mean the uh, Linux command line returns indicating that the transfer was successful at least from the Linux PC's point of view and returning to the left hand window we can see that the um, monitor program command prompt is back indicating that the transfer was successful from the Z80 computer's point of view. Now to verify that we have program in memory we can uh, dump the first part of the RAM to the screen and we should see our program sitting there and that's uh, what we see. This looks like uh, program data. So now we can uh, run the program And we see that the Z80 computer displayed Hello World, indicating that the program assembled and ran correctly. Now I'll demonstrate transferring a binary file from the Z80 computer to the Linux PC using the bdump command. Let's uh, say that we're unhappy with our hello world command and since we're not quite so confident about the state of the world we want to change the exclamation point to a question mark. The ASCII code for the exclamation point is here in location 0817 um, and we want to change that to the ASCII code for a question mark. So here we can um, use the load command and change the, the data in 0817 to the code for a question mark, which is ASCII3F. Um, now if we run the program again, uh, we see that uh, the exclamation point is changed to a question mark. So let's say we like this program better and we want to save it back to the Linux PC. We will use the bdump command to do that. And again, we start at location 0800. The program is the same length, 25 bytes. And now if we hit a key, it will send these 25 bytes uh, across the serial interface to the PC. So we have to get the PC ready to receive this file. So now I've switched over to the right-hand window to get ready to receive the file. So for this we can use the Linux head command. This is a command dating back to the Unix days and was used to display the header of a file so you could see quickly what was in it. Um, in this case we can use it to display, as it were, a certain number of bytes let's uh, say 25 bytes since that's the length of the file we're going to get. 
uh, from the file, which is the serial port. Everything's a file in Linux. And we'll redirect the output into a new file, which we'll call hello world 2.bin. Now the Linux computer is waiting to receive the bytes from the Z80 computer. Returning to the left hand window, we'll just hit any key and we return to the command line prompt indicating, at least from the Z80's point of view, that the transfer went well and finished. And looking at the right hand window, we see we're back at the uh, Linux command line prompt indicating that the Linux computer was happy with the transfer as well. Now if we list the directory um, you can see that indeed the uh, Linux computer has received the file and placed it in its directory. This concludes a demonstration of transferring binary data back and forth between the Z80 computer with the serial interface and the PC running Linux. In another video I'll show how to do these transfers using the real term program in Windows.